first, I mean, you're back. Uh, yeah. What's it feel like to be back in Bozeman? It's been good. It's been a whirlwind. Um, I'll tell you this, though, the first couple months, particularly what was that, February, when it was just dark, snowy, cold, negative degrees, snow everywhere. There was a time where I was like, okay, what did I do? Why am I here? And my wife was looking at me the same way every morning, like, really? We came back for this? Uh, but no, it's been awesome. And we know that with Montana comes these type of weather situations where you're going to have those type of weeks. But in the end, the snow or the sun's going to come out, the snow's going to melt, and it's going to be beautiful Montana. This community's growing and changing so much. How yeah. different was it uh, when you did get back here in February compared to when you left? It was just the amount of houses that are coming up on a daily basis is unreal to me. Uh, there's a few new restaurants, a few new places. Sidewinders in particular is, is a place that I've frequented uh, in, with my wife. They've got unbelievable pretzel, um, but I uh, really like their atmosphere over there. It was a new spot we hadn't been since we'd been gone. And, but it's cool just to see how far Bozeman has come since my, really my freshman year in the year 2000 till now is a whole different town. I can remember on the recruiting visit, I stayed at the old Wingate Hotel, which I think is a Holiday Express now. Um, and it was the Wingate. I think Costco had just been built, and that was literally the only thing on 19th past, I want to say Oak. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's pretty cool to see the size of Bozeman and um, just uh, the community itself is still so welcoming and genuine. It hasn't lost its local flavor. When, you, when it was announced you were coming back, and you know, there had been obviously the rumors and stuff, um, I don't know if Bobcat fans could have been any more excited than to see Kane Ione come back. You're my mom's favorite player. Uh, what's, it like, what's it mean to you to have that type of support uh, with this community, this program? That's what makes Bozeman so special. That's what really makes the state of Montana so special. It's just that tight community feel, that really that family type feel where they're just so genuine. They're genuinely happy to see myself, my wife, my, my little baby daughter, and, and it just makes you feel really good. It's a special, special place. And I tell people that all the time. You can tell recruits that all the time. And until they actually experience it, they don't really know. But being out at Seattle, and it was amazing. University of Washington, amazing experience. But you still miss that feeling of being able to walk around town and have people come up and say, hey, welcome back, welcome home. It's just a, it's a unique, special feeling. When you left, um, the rebuild was in progress. Now you're back and mm -hmm. they're coming off a playoff win. Um, just as far as the excitement around the program, um, maybe the focus, the goals, where are they now compared to where they were uh, when you were here, here previously? I think that first year when we were all together in, in 2016, like you said, it was we were on starting the process of how can we get ourselves back to where Montana State football should be. And... Coach Choate was trying to implement what he felt should be the, the proper culture in which a successful team should have, a successful program should have. And it was, initially it was a struggle. It was tough because when you're talking about changing cultures, you're talking about changing habits, you're talking about changing a lot of things, and it takes time. It's a process. And I'll step away. I actually go to University of Washington and kind of see the end result to a certain extent of Coach Peterson and how he had built that pro or culture there at the University of Washington from when he, when he had first got there till then. So it was kind of cool to kind of go from here's the start, here's really what the end result could be. And then now getting a chance to come back and see how much progress has been made and see how close we are and to have seen, watch the playoff games and to see the guys and just the way they go about their business, the, how they handle the locker room. And it's so different from when, it, when I first left in 2016. Uh, that has been extremely encouraging, extremely positive, And it's been fun to just watch, uh, OK, we're on the verge. We're on the verge of doing some special things around here. And we've just got to continue on the path and stay disciplined to that path and, and to that process. How about for you personally, um, how have you changed? How have you grown? Uh, in those two years that you were out uh, out west, a lot, a lot. Not only, uh, more almost personally than professionally, to be honest. Professionally, there was so much that that I was able to take in and absorb as far as just uh, everything that Coach Peterson and his staff, Coach Jimmy Lake, Coach Pete Krukowski, the defense staff, Kaika Malloy, uh, Bob Gregg. I mean, the list. I go list of, uh, coach by coach as far as some of the guys that I was able to be around and take things from, and and just the detail 
how much they're so detail oriented out there and, and just how to truly have a successful program. So much growth in that regard. But it actually, in comparison to how much I grew, just personally, is it's it's funny. It it, it takes kind of a step behind when it, when you talk about me getting married. So now I have a wife, I have a little baby daughter, ten months old, which just those two things in itself changes you so much. No matter how much people will tell you, hey, having a kid's gonna change you, getting married's gonna change you, like, ah, whatever. I'm always gonna be the same person. You are, but you're not. Because you just you understand that priorities change. Did did you and Matt and Bobby all plan this? All new, <laughs> newly married and kid kids now. And yeah. How, how did you guys all sync up like that? Uh, it's, you know, we did not plan it by any means, but uh, it it kind of makes it fun for all of us to kind of be going through similar processes and similar personal things outside of the football realm, it gives us a lot of things to talk about and, and a, a lot of fun conversations, to say the least. What's your best newlywed, new father story that you can share with us? <laughs> oh, there's so many of them. There is so many of them. Um, I'm sure if my wife was sitting here, she could share all the real, the real goods as far as some of my fatherhood mistakes so far. Um, but I'll tell you this, this is one, and this is not really a funny story as much as just a kind of a for me, motivation and inspiration. Like my daughter, I watch my daughter and how she progresses and, and how she goes from literally in 24 hours, how much she changes. And just her unbelievable, um, what's the word? Determination. Her determination to just, okay, uh, I gotta figure out this crawl thing. So one day she's down all fours and she's just kind of rocking back and forth, can't quite figure it out. Literally 24 hours later, she's crawling. And now she's trying to take her first steps and it's, she's falling after fall after fall. She just chipped her, uh, uh, or bit her tongue today because she fell and hit the table and ble blood everywhere. But guarantee it's not gonna deter her from trying to walk, right? So I'm sharing, I'm, I'm trying to share or have that same type of mental um, capacity where it's like, I don't care what type of obstacles or adversity you're, sharing or you're facing. If I could just have my 10-month-year-old daughter's mentality as far as just that never satisfied, the I'm going to keep going regardless of what happened. I may fall multiple times. If I just maintain that type of mentality through life, I'm going to be pretty successful, right? And if I can share that with my players, we can be pretty dang good. And so there's just so much that you, you wouldn't think that you would be learning from a 10-month-year-old year old daughter but she's teaching me something every single day and it's it's kind of fun to go through that so we have a 10 month old who is basically the defensive coordinator that's exactly it <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it so fans out there if there's any issues take it up with my daughter <laughs> i don't know if that's fair uh, being back here did you ever think that you would be coming back here as a defensive coordinator joining this staff that you kind of started this rebuild with mm -hmm. uh to be honest i didn't think it, I, it would be back as quickly as it happened. When I stepped away to go to the University of Washington, I anticipated me being away from Bozeman for quite some time and kind of seeing where the profession would take me. But at the same time, there's always that little pull. You know, Bozeman has some kind of gravitational pull uh, for all of us former players and alumni and those that have experienced such great experience that I've had here. Um, and the fact that I always felt like Coach Choate uh, and I were on the same page in a lot of different ways. And we had similar visions as far as where Montana State should be. And so when that opportunity arose and, and was not by any means anticipating or expecting it, but when the opportunity arose, there's no way I was going to pass that up. If you can, take us, take us back to December when this opportunity did arise. I mean, what, what was the conversation and, and what was the pull for you to maybe stick it out at Washington versus coming back? Mm -hmm. And really it was... Um, the opportunity arose, I believe, I want to say, actually coming back from the Rose Bowl and having gone through that experience, which is an unbelievable experience. And, um, you know, just had kind of a couple brief conversations as far as, hey, what would, what would you think if this opportunity does come about? And so it was a conversation between the, what, my wife and I and, and kind of what's my next step professionally, what's going to be the best thing for me, both professionally and personal on a personal level. And um, when Coach Choate really extended the opportunity and gave me that option of sorts, it 
there wasn't much hesitation, to be honest. Um, all it took was one conversation with my wife and a couple conversations with some coaches that I really, truly trust uh, as far as what they felt was the best opportunity for me or, or would be the best thing for me professionally. And again, Bozeman is just such a great place, and I, I see such great things for this place as far as our football program is concerned, and I couldn't pass it up. So you come back, you kick BJ out of your house. Uh, <laughs> what have you been doing since then? <laughs> I've been trying to get my life as, and feel like I'm as organized as I possibly can. It's been an absolute whirlwind in that regard. Fortunately, my wife has been amazing as far as really trying to handle anything outside of the football realm. Uh, she got our house lined up. She got everything kind of lined up and in place in that regard. And so it's really just been about me trying to dive into this football thing and trying to get to know the players again, trying to connect with them as much as I possibly can, not only in the secondary, but the entire defensive personnel, really kind of dive in with the staff as far as, all right, here's, here's my big vision, here's my big picture of what I want this defense to look like, or to look like, give me some input, give me some ideas, give me some thoughts on that, and then let's, let's really hammer this out as far as all the details that it, that it really is gonna to take to get us to where we wanna to get to. And so that's what I've been trying to spend my time on as much as really all my time has been spent on trying to get this vision that I have defensively for us and kind of the path in which I see us going to get to that vision. And um, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a heck of a process. But I'm fortunate that, like I said, not only do I have a tremendous, unbelievable wife uh, and my 10-month-old daughter, Ava, that's really, like I said, inspiring me, but um, I've got an unbelievable defensive staff that's been just great to work with, uh, starting with the guys that have been here before, Coach Kyle Reisinger and Coach Byron Hout, and then obviously adding Bobby Daly uh, to the mix, who I'm very familiar with. Um, and then just the other two guys that don't get mentioned or won't be mentioned very often, uh, Coach Austin Yabara, our defensive intern, and then Coach uh, Hayden Shu, who's really been a, a big factor for us these last couple of weeks as well. Uh, so those guys have been unbelievable as far as helping build towards that vision that I have for this defense. Uh, we could probably chat all day long. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else that specifically that you want to want to get out there for the public? Anything that you want to talk about real quick? Yeah, I, I just really want, really want to emphasize the fact that uh, I'm coming in a really good position in the fact that these guys have done some really good things. Uh, and credit goes to Coach Choate and his entire staff. Um, these last how many years have, since I've been gone, the last couple of years since I've been gone, and, and the work that they've done to get us to where we are and get us to the, the playoffs last year, get a taste for the players as far as what success really is and what it will take to get us to that next level. And um, so I'm in a very fortunate position to be able to come into an awesome opportunity with, like I said, a great staff to be around and to work with, and an unbelievable head coach that allows me to to coach and do my thing and, and um, fortunate to have the players that we have that have bought into the culture and really all about Montana State, Montana State football and want to be as successful as possible.